Incredible things. Let's continue the myths versus facts about Super Memo and incremental routing. Now it's time for the incremental routing is insuitable for programmers. Is that a myth or is it a fact? Incremental routing is not suitable for programmers at all. Let's see that. So the claim is that incremental routing is available for code analysts and all of that. It's only for normal text or articles. We could see that for computer science or even STEM. So mathematics and all of that, not just computing. What is the reasoning uh, for this claim? That some statements note that computer code is not suitable as text for incremental reading. Computer code. So the quote, people assume we can handle code line by line in incremental reading. So it must be pointless for programmers. What's the reality? Flexible method. Incremental reading is about handling text of any format, chunk by chunk. This can include code if approached carefully. You also know there's some less incremental there's text which is less friendly for incremental reading, like a scientific paper. You have introduction, methodology, and all of that. Yeah, if I have a study, do you think it would be good if I see more or less what's the sample? After a few weeks, how they designed the study, after a few months, the, um, the results, and so on. And if I mix hundreds of articles, it will be a mess, right? It's not that friendly. Cool. But we stay now with computing. So, especially programming use cases, reviewing large code bases with separate modules or well encapsulated functions. And processing short procedures or snippets or different priority levels over time. So incremental reading organizes text in a spaced manner and prioritize review. Remember, you will see this in a nonlinear fashion, interruptions, but also prioritized. You will see the chunks that are high are more important before the others. So in incremental reading, the text is not limited to ordinary prose. That's a golden eye. So when works best for coders? Short, well-structured snippets. Obviously, it won't be the best if you have a huge chunk of code, super large, like in the research paper. It won't be that, fr that friendly. If your code modules are modular and can be extracted into brief, meaningful segments, incremental reading can schedule them just like paragraphs. See for documentation of uh, code. Actually, that's what I did. I use documentation of some Python and AutoHotKey especially. So I'll be not professional. I have some real experience, hands-on experience myself using incremental reading for this. And repeated insights. Code architecture insights may surface the right intervals, reinforcing patterns into design and logic. Sometimes it's not just about the code. Okay, you can know already the syntax, the name of the, I don't know, the methods or live common libraries, but that is more high level. How you do this kind of loop or how you save that uh, algorithm, stuff like that. It's a very high level. Yes, you can do it in prose, in plain English, but you can just use pseudocode if you want, or plain code. So the tip so far, focus on small, self-contained sections like functions or classes so you can store them effectively something i haven't mentioned in this video i'm not going to show you any examples because this is just the only to tackle the myth that incremental thing is not for coding then later on in the course we will see those uh, some uh, examples what are the potential advantages of using incremental thing for coding Prioritized learning. Exactly, you're going to assign any priority and this um, is more applicable for me. I need this urgently or this depends on something else. I will set a high priority. I will show this more often. Therefore, I will learn this first of as if the stuff that is not that relevant. That is good to have this in my software, but it can wait. Better retention. Since I will have this, I will be able to recognize this pattern. 
So when I'm coding and I see this error, oh yeah, I faced this before, da 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 da. An incremental consolidation. Complex code can be revisited in small bytes. I'm equally fine. Sometimes, oh wow, I forgot. It's been years. For instance, I have Python scripts that I did 14 years ago. And it's, oh, I don't even remember the syntax. It's just um, when so Python 3 started, something like that. I even had to convert some scripts that I had with Python 2. Imagine that. So, quote, like reading a thousand articles in parallel in incremental reading, that is just prose, you can learn from a thousand code snippets. Both demand incremental scheduling. Exactly. So, common misconceptions. Code doesn't fit text format. Actually, code can be chunked like text. Snippet comments, explanations, is become an extract. What perhaps is not the true in super memo is that you don't have syntax highlighting unless you do some trickery. Can be done at shift, but you have to do trickery. Using vanilla super memo, you have plain text, and having code in plain text, hmm. But if, but if it's a few lines, no worries. You don't want to memorize verbatim code. You just want the high level knowledge on JavaScript. Or if you make this syntax, what will happen at that or uh, if you don't declare this in this way, what will happen in JavaScript? What will be the result? It will be a known, null, da da da, stuff like this. Useless deep debugging. While some debugging requires continuous focus, incremental reading can help with broader code reviews or knowledge building. Exactly. It's very high level. As you know today, uh, for instance, James B, who spent a lot more time than I did with coding, uh, I think he said about 20%. So meaning that 80% of your learning is actually coding. The practice of coding apps, having some projects. Incremental reading at maximum will represent 20% of your time invested with uh, coding. So not all code analysis is a single stretch of concentration. Some context benefits from space to revisits. Exactly. Same as the prose, uh, material in prose. So the, what are the best practices for programmers? Segment appropriately. Each snippet or function should be small enough for quick review. Atomicity. Add context if, if it's required. That's why it's done this way, possible pitfalls. That, okay, I always end up with the same mistake because I assume it's this behavior, but it's not. I'm more or less explanation why. You will need to add this context. Don't trust your memory. Add the context, but add it on the answer field. Uncombined with traditional methods, exactly. Uh, you need to practice. It's more uh, pragmatic, uh, more um, procedural. Uh, use and apply what you learn. Yes, yes, that. Don't use uh, incremental reading alone for coding. That will make no sense. So, quote, use incremental reading as a complement, not a replacement for your main coding workflow. So, conclusion, the myth goes debunked. Incremental reading is not automatically useless for programmers. It's useful, it's just not at the same degree uh, than prose because you need to solve problems with coding. It's more pragmatic. Could be the same for a, I know, a physical therapist. Hey, with incremental learning, you can know the jargon, the anatomy, the pros and cons, the consequences, what to do. But hey, you need to practice with your hands and the dexterity. So, um, because it's what it is, it's a physical practice. Same thing. So, code can be treated like any textual information if it's structured properly. What's the takeaway? By focusing on well encapsulated code snippets or relevant documentation, you can systematically review critical parts of your programming knowledge base. So imagine that I have a project of my own project of auto hotkey. Some PHP, for instance, why I don't do this for PHP myself? I have my, my website, pleasurable-learning.com, is with PHP. The server, I have the MediaWiki server and all of that. But why you don't have almost 
I had some flashcards which I deleted by the way. Why? Because I don't code in PHP. Oh, now I have this need. Let me Google this. Okay, I need to do this. This I only need this once. I'm not going to code myself in PHP. I no longer need that. But in uh, Tohotki SA, I use this very often. I mean very often. So if I want to create a new um, function and how I use a hotkey for super memo, hey, this is from to know. Therefore, I create the items. So final thought. Programmers, coders, can benefit from incremental reading, just as others do, by carefully chunking code and like letting a special petition anchor essential concepts and snippets. The only difference is that it, do, it is just a smaller part of your flow, the incremental reading, but it's as easy as, it's as usual as always, same as the um, physical therapist, but it gets most of the benefit of the part of incremental reading, it's true. It's just that the dexterity with fingers is not achieved. See, for a pianist, you can use a piano for scheduling all of the um, practice all of that, but you need the physical dexterity of the fingers as a pianist that you don't achieve with uh, incremental reading. So that's more or less, I think, the scope. That A is not suitable because you think about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for the scope, the part of incremental reading is 100% suitable. I hope I made my um, point clear and we will see examples later on in, in the course. Very late when we cover the use cases and the formulation. But for now, that's all. See you incrementally.